So I'm revisiting the Venetian Boat Song, Opus 30, number 6. It's the F sharp minor one, and it's uh, El Gretto Chanquillo, which is a moderate speed, but it's very peaceful. And um, the main thing is there are a lot of broken chords in the left hand that create the rocking motion of the boat. And so it has to be very smooth. One has to be very aware that at the mid-measure, which would be the second beat, because we think of six-eighth time, which this piece is in, as duple compound. And so it's a sense of duple rhythm, that you're feeling a sense of two with the second part of the measure, which is the second beat being lighter slightly. So when you're practicing these broken chords and you're using some rotation, you're making sure that the second part folds in nicely and doesn't jump out. So one, two, one, which the rotation lateral, two, one, lean on one a little bit, two. And that's a pattern you're going to see in this when you see this a lot through the piece. But then there are little places where there are departures from that. They're still in two, but the left hand might change its shape, such as in measure one, two, three, four, five, where you have a little bridge, which is a little break here. here. solo for the left hand because the right hand is going to be coming in in the third measure as being the melody. So this underpinning of two and with the rotations are very important. So I'm going to look at places where the left hand has something a little different. For instance, to support a crescendo in the right hand, and that would be starting measure 21 where it just starts soft and you notice the rotations. It's the second version, so it stays in the second version. This is going to be the underpinning of a bunch of sequences upstairs. which will be creating sequences in crescendo to this peak point, which is the dominant here, with a push in. Push. That will support that for sure. That's where really the tranquillo is more intense. Now we're more into intensity. And then he comes back with this, which we heard before. It's body. And I do the trill in it as a remediated trill. I play it slower. But the left hand under this trill has a diminished chord of the four chord of uh, F sharp minor. The four chord of F sharp minor is a B minor chord. And if you want to do a diminished chord under it, you can put an A sharp, C sharp, E, G under it, which pulls toward it. So what's going to happen here, which is, you know, a divergence from what we've heard before, is this underneath. And finally, very big on the four chord, big here, big. And that's going to spill, that's going to be over that as a big SF spill in the right hand. And you want to support that, but not drown what's going to be upstairs. I'll go over what's going to be upstairs. So you know how to factor in what the left hand's doing is against the right hand. And the left hand continues and falls down again back to the redundancy of the beginning. Here you can see. Notice the rotations. And then we have big jumps like here. Broken octave, dominant. And then we're going to go, it goes back to the middle section, but we're going to go to the end for a moment. So the end is like a coda. Suddenly we have broken octaves. Ta, ta, it's a natural minor going down. And then it gets big and then softer. And it resolves. So the arm 
weight is important. These are going to get bigger, these broken up. Two, three of those relentless broken chord F sharp minor tonics. That's basically what's happening in the left hand, so it's good to study the left hand at its various junctures where it may be intensifying where the right hand is creating modulations up and sequences up. And of course you should do the right hand alone. Comes in with an E sharp, which is forte, push, and then roll forward. And then we have the left hand doing its little solo, and then the right hand comes in with a roll. You want to roll. And then you have finger substitutions. And then we have two thumb. And this is one long line. Long lines. Finger substitution. Another one. It's building here. Um, two A SF. Another SF. So you really want to support that with arm weight. And as that's decaying or dissolving, you come in on the decay. You listen very carefully to what comes before. And then you have a very long line here. Now here's where you're going to have little sequences that are going to build. I'm going to add a little upper voice and lower voice to this. Push, push. Listen to the end of it. These are sequences up. So these are building. Connect here. And then this is the climax here of this phrase. And then push. This is an SF, so we're really pushing to that. And then we have that little interval of this. Now we have that famous trill there that comes in. Underneath that trill is a diminished chord of the four chord, which is, again, this going to the four chord. And I showed you that when I did separate hands. When you do hands together, you're going to have the trill over it. And the way I play my trill is, sort of to, as training wheels, I do four 30 seconds to each eighth as a remedial measure, sort of to plan for the trill, such as this. I'll go back to this. play the trill, and I'm using a 2-4, you can use a 2-3 on your trill. I'm going to see how that helps me. that what 
what's happening here. I thought there were two dotted half notes tied, but there may be only a dotted half note tied to a dotted quarter. I can't tell from my addition here. And if it is that way, it would be hold all the way over. That's an octave. And then only hold for this much and then release the C sharp, which I think is what it's written there. So I do a lot of separate hands of that melody and then hands together. And the final trill, it's ideal if you can do the final trill on the dominant with a 1-3, but I'm finding it's kind of hard to come out of the 1-3. If I have a good trill day, if you have a good trill day, you might be able to easily do that. It should be easy. But some days it just isn't, and you might like this. chance of smacking on the D sharp and not getting a smooth turnaround to the top note. You have to be careful. So let's see what we can do with this last trill. Now the left hand suddenly, and this is a coda section at the end, it's broken octaves that come down in the natural minor. They come down to the four chord. Now if you use a one, three, I would do this. One, two, three, four. This is to have a relentless rocking motion left hand. Subdue your second beat so they don't poke out, and that way you'll get the rocking motion, the smooth rocking motion. Um, support the climaxes uh, of the piece with a, a bigger left hand suddenly. Instead of subdued, you need. You know, big slur across, uh, say, three measures. You don't try to break up the, uh, the uh, phrase, but you want to think a long spun phrase with a curve around like that all the way across. So this piece is very challenging. So practice is the best thing. So